Is your Mitsubishi Outlander touchscreen faulty? Does the screen not react to finger presses, or does the touchscreen only work in a small area? Replacing the touchscreen digitizer will fix your issue. At QuickCycle, we provide OEM quality replacement parts delivered the next day in the UK and shipped internationally. We provide detailed instructions and after-sales support to ensure your repair is successful, easy and quick to complete. We supply all types of Mitsubishi Outlander and Mitsubishi ASX touchscreens, including supplementary PDF instructions for this replacement process in addition to this video. If your screen is similar to the one in the video, we will have the correct screen to meet your requirements. More info on compatibility is contained on the specific product pages on our website. The following tools are required to replace the touchscreen digitizer on your Mitsubishi Outlander. A set of automotive trim pry tools, screen pry tools, standard and small-sized Phillips screwdrivers, heat gun or hair dryer, and a replacement OEM quality touchscreen. If you need any of the required tools or OEM quality parts from QuickCycle, please check the description on this video for all products you may require. Let's get into the repair process. Remove the touchscreen bezel by prying between the chrome trim and dash using a plastic pry tool. This comes out quite easily. Start unclipping from the right-hand side. Release the electrical connectors to the bezel so it can be removed. Push down on the connector tabs and wiggle them free. Unscrew the four Phillips screws securing the head unit in place. Lift the head unit from the dash and take a picture of the connectors plugged, as these are different depending on model specification. This will help you check that they are all back in place on reinstallation. All plugs will only fit in one location, but they all must be plugged back to ensure screen functionality. Remove the plugs by depressing the connector buttons, giving them a wiggle to free them. Mark the side bracket locations on each side and remove the four Phillips screws to remove them. These brackets need to be removed to access the other screws. Remove the nine screws highlighted to allow front bezel to be removed. Remove three screws on the top cover of the radio to allow the screen ribbon cable to be disconnected. The ribbon cable needs to be removed before removing the front screen. Lift the tab on the ribbon cable connector to release the ribbon cable. With the connector unlatched, lift out the ribbon cable. Remove the screen by prying under and lifting the tabs to release the black plastic bezel. Work your way around the screen to release all the tabs. With all the tabs released, the screen will be free to be removed. Lift the screen off. Remove the six Phillips screws. Red highlighted screws are longer than the two highlighted in yellow.
The five highlighted ribbon cables will need to be removed. Review the next steps in the PDF instructions carefully to see how to disconnect these correctly. Lift the ribbon cable clip to allow the cable to be released. Once clips are open, lift out the cable and set aside. Disconnect the other ribbon cables. Now the circuit board frame can be removed. Pry at the three metal clips to release and remove the frame. The frame can now be lifted off. Now the LCD screen can be removed. Flip the screen over so the touch screen is facing up. Give it a few good slaps and the screen will release and fall out. Make sure you have something soft underneath so it is not damaged when released. Once the screen is removed, take extra care not to get dust or dirt on the screen with it removed. Finally, the touch screen can be removed. First, the retaining frame needs to be removed. This is glued to the screen. Soften the adhesive with the application of heat either with a hairdryer or a heat gun. Using a knife or sharp and thin tool, get between the touchscreen glass and the frame to release the glue. Work all the way around the screen and reapply heat as necessary. The metal internal screen can now be lifted off. Heat needs to be applied again to the screen to allow it to be released. Apply good heat and pry up at one corner. Use a sharp tool and then use a plastic tool to work the way around the screen and release it from the housing. The housing is made of plastic, so take care not to mark the surface. The frame can now be lifted off. Remove any remaining glue on the screen bezel before installing the new touchscreen. Take the OEM quality screen supplied by QuickCycle and remove the protective film and cover from the double-sided tape. Fit the new screen into the bezel Ensure you line up the ribbon cable with the cutout on the bottom of the screen. Align one edge of the touch screen first and then place it gently into position. The glue on the screen is very strong, so place the screen gently at first so adjustment is possible. Place the metal retaining frame back into place. Before placing the screen back in, clean the back side of the touch screen to ensure there is no visible dust or dirt particles as these will be stuck inside. After fitting the LCD screen, visually inspect to ensure there is not dust or dirt trapped between the screens. Remove LCD and clean again as necessary. The next steps can be completed in reverse order of this instruction, but specific care needs to be taken when reinstalling the ribbon cables. Please refer to the PDF supplied with your screen from QuickCycle to ensure these critical steps are carried out correctly. Well done on successfully changing your touchscreen. We hope this instruction from QuickCycle has helped you repair your vehicle.
please give our video a like and a comment and subscribe for our future videos. If you need a replacement screen, please visit our UK website from the link in the description for an OEM quality replacement part available to be shipped worldwide.